That's fine. I think I'll probably go with this for now. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, we are in rural and semi-rural Pennsylvania. And I work as a data scientist here. Uh, and, and I joined Geisinger around four years back in 2016. And that was also around the time when we were setting up our data science team and an enterprise data platform using Hadoop and big data. Um, so today I'm probably go going to talk about some of the modifications and customizations that we made uh, on Apache CTEX and how it really helped us uh, take some of the projects off the ground. And I'm going to talk about uh, three use cases today. The first one is going to be the incidental lung nodule use case, uh, followed by the thyroid nodule, which is pretty similar to the first one first module, and you'll see why. And then I'll probably uh, talk about a few slides about the, the project that we are currently doing right now, which again relates to stroke. So without further ado, I'll probably start with the lung nodule use case. So as with any health system in the US, uh, Geisinger gets sued a lot. And one of the causes when the leadership looked into it was incidental lung nodules. So we had incidental lung nodules which were missing in uh, the radiology nodes. So what usually happens is you have someone who comes in for a CT. Uh, the radiologist makes note of a nodule in the notes, but it does not get followed up. Cut to two years later, the patient shows up in the pulmonary clinic with a malignancy. And, and what happens is, and as I mentioned, as I, as I stress, since Geisinger caters mostly to a semi-urban and rural population, most of our patients are on Medicare and Medicaid. And there are stringent CMS criteria and guidelines which actually drive how much we get paid. So closing this loop on the incidental nodules, is actually a big deal for us, both clinically and financially. Uh, but, but can you actually have physicians or nurses read through the radiology notes? That's probably not feasible, certainly not feasible for a health system of Geisinger's size, which churns out around 50 to 60,000 patient notes each day. So that's when we started looking at an automated way, and that's when we settled on CTEX. So as I mentioned about the malignancy, 20% of the total Medicare cost is due to cancer. And, and actually, not only does it uh, give the hospital a good ROI, it also helps deliver a bit better patient care, right? I mean, if there is a sub-centimeter nodule which gets caught a year or even six months prior, the survival rates actually increase pretty expo exponentially, and there is a lot of literature on that. Uh, so this was the beginning of the Close the Loop project, uh, where we identify the incidental lung nodules through NLP. Then that results actually gets chart reviewed by a nurse navigator, and, they, and then it gets filtered down to a uh, 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 scheduler so that they are brought in back to the pulmonary clinic. Uh, today, I'm mostly going to talk about the, the pulmonary nodule portion, the NLP part of it. So as I mentioned, we have an in-house uh, Hadoop platform. Uh, why in-house? Again, people, most of you who are in healthcare probably know the regulatory cost of setting something up in the cloud, although it is happening. Uh, but this was way back when, in early 2015, 16, and we wanted to go full in-house. We, you, you probably, if you are, if you are in the healthcare domain, you've probably seen a bunch of heterogeneous data sources from a bunch of different vendors. Again, what this makes getting a longitudinal picture of the patient really difficult. So one good thing was that with the big data Hadoop platform, we actually developed an enterprise data warehouse, sort of like a data lake, which we then used for our NLP.
let's skip this slide. Yeah, this one. So this is, so let me talk a bit about the scale of the nodes that we are dealing with here. So we are talking about around, around 200 million nodes in Epic, you know, historical. Obviously, we were not going to run it on 200 million nodes. We were going to have selection criteria for selecting, selecting some of the nodes by using procedure codes, uh, et cetera, and et cetera. But still, we generate around 60,000 nodes each day. Um, and we actually have developed the pipeline where by using Spark, we can annotate around 50,000 nodes an hour. And I'm going to delve into how and what modifications we did that. Um, again, this slide, I'm just going to skip for this audience. Uh, similarly with this one. So yeah, so we have, so how our pipeline works is we have radiology nodes for the last uh, 10, 15 years. We run it through our uh, CTEX pipeline. And one, and one of the first modifications that we did to our pipeline is we actually separated the tokenization out. So we run it in stages instead of running the whole pipeline from uh, center from token from center boundary detection all the way up to uh, sentiment analysis. And then in the end, we have some custom uh, annotators which actually extract the uh, some of the attributes for the lung nodule cell. So for example, it picks out the size, the location, et cetera, and so on and so forth. But before that, we actually run it till the UMLS dictionary to find concepts for lung nodule. And as you can see, that's where kind of the bulk of the node gets filtered out. So around 10 million nodes, historically, we filter out around 9.7 million because they do not have any list of uh, queries which, which are relevant to the use case. We are left with around 300,000, which again is nothing to sneeze at. And then we run it through our sentiment analysis, our custom uh, annotator for getting the attributes, location, size, et cetera. Um, so some of the modifications that we made. So for, first of all, every th our uh, nodes are in a, on HDFS. We use Hive as our data store and obviously, Processing involved, cleaning special characters, and so on and so forth. Um, and then what we do is, as I mentioned, we first run uh, the first three or four stages from boundary detection, uh, uh, tokenization, just till before the dictionary phase, which is when the dictionary lookup happens. And we store the cache in an age-based table uh, in a base64 format. Now, why age-based? Because with, with the scale of nodes that we are dealing with here, uh, it's important that we are able to scale. And if you guys, and if you guys have, and I think most of this audience have worked with CTEX, so you guys know that uh, the, the CAS XML can be pretty verbose. So what we do is we uh, base64 encode it and push it to HBase by using our node ID as, as, the, as the key. And so we do it, so first we run it till before uh, the dictionary annotation, then we run the dictionary separately. And once we run the dictionary, we filter out the nodes based on specific queries. Now, how do we select these queries? That actually varies from use case to use case. Uh, usually we work with physicians and doctors to come up with a list of concepts. And then of course, it's, it's not very difficult to map that to existing uh, queries. Although, again, it's not a trivial task. Uh, once we see a hit with a particular query, that's when we take those nodes or take those cases to be more exact and run it through our sentiment annotation output. And again, all our intermediate cache files are stored in HBase so that we, can, we don't have to reprocess the nodes over and over again, especially Let's say if we have a radiology node, which we want to run with a set of QE C1, and then tomorrow we want to run with another set of QE C2, we can probably go back and look at the cache uh, for the pre-dictionary stage and load it again. So once we, and then we of course look at the sentiment analysis and we have the annotation, we look at the concept, whether what's the polarity, uh, whether, whether it's 
Although, I mean, a bit of a hit and miss for us. Uh, but uh, yeah, we can get that. We can get to that part of the discussion. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, we have custom annotators, which again, uh, and for each use case, so for the long module use case, we have custom annotators, which then extracts uh, nodule size, location of the nodule, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we have uh, custom annotators for the high, for the other use cases, and finally, we again store it back on HDFS and and we and expose it as a Hive table, so that reporting can be based off it. So for the lung nodule use. We had of radiology nodes, valid for clinical information, and these numbers are reflective from that validation or that gold standard set. Um, again, so far, so lung rat zero to lung rats four B. That's a clinical criteria that we have to label the nodes on. So as you can see, lung rat zero is incomplete with almost negligible risk of cancer all the way up to 4B. Uh, and again, for making each one of those decisions, you need those extract attributes, which I which we extract in the last uh, stage of our, of our annotation, which is we need our size, we need polarity, and we also need the location. And we also have a few descriptive keywords like whether it's growing or not. So, so this is what a typical output for the lung nodule uh, use case looks like. Um, sorry, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you'll probably so 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 basically the goal of this whole exercise is kind of to take the unstructured text that we have from uh, uh, the notes and structure it by and label it and bin it. And this, obviously, the end goal is to kind of bin the patients and then have a nurse practitioner or scheduler reach out to them. So this is kind of our, uh, our the final output of the NLP pipeline. Um, as I mentioned, we had a validation set of around 1,000 nodes validated by four physician informatician. Uh, we done the usual type 1, type 2 errors, which you saw. Uh, the next use case is a very similar use case. This is finding incidental thyroid nodules. And again, just to give you a brief idea about the use case, we have a bunch of rules and attributes that we need to extract, like whether it's part of the left isthmus, whether it's heterogeneous calcification, so on and so forth. But this is very similar to the lung nodule use case, and you can see why uh, this is. Again, this is an example. Uh, CT note that you have, and of course, with the final output when presented in this format, allows us to discretize and bin our patients here. Um, this is the XML, the NER, and so on and so forth. Uh, I don't have anything for this slide, but let me go skip over quickly. And yeah, these are our statistics for the lung nodule use case. Uh, similarly, we had the same uh, uh, validation set by a, by a bunch of clinician physicians. It, this was a different validation set. This was not the 1096 that we had previously. Uh, this was uh, just specific, another gold standard that we, that we came up with internally just for the thyroid nodules. So, so this is something which we are working on right now. Uh, so we are working on a novel screening tool for stroke prediction. So what happens is in the ER, when somebody presents themselves with stroke or stroke-like symptoms, it's a bit difficult to discern whether it's a stroke mimic or not. And even before we look at the patient history or the clinical criteria, we want to have sort of like a broad filter using the ED triage notes uh, to kind of separate out the stroke and the stroke mimics from the rest of the cohort. Uh, so somebody experiences dizziness, works into the e, walks into the ED. Uh, the ED triage note is generated, which usually are very small. I think average 
Reynolds uh, system. Um, once the patient is identified, uh, so so obviously we run our CTEX on the ED nodes. Similarly, we have a list of curated concepts that we are interested in, and we definitely look at their attributes like polarity, whether it's a sign or a symptom, et cetera, and so on and so forth, and we triage them ac accordingly. And also what happens is uh, each triage notes gets decomposed as a word of quiz, if you will, similar to a bag of words, but here, we actually use quiz instead of words, which are more robust, uh, and use that. And, and, this, and the reason I mention is this is later on used for training a machine learning model, which we are uh, in, in, which we are thinking of implementing in our uh, acute care setting, uh, uh, and we are working with one vendor on on this, uh, on coming up with this uh, implementation. Um, so yeah, our case control definition. So we had, as, as I mentioned, cases are people who experience sign symptoms for stroke, and our super and we have super control definitions which excludes everybody except those patients, which we use for. Uh, and again, we generate queries for both the cases and the super controls, which serves as the features for our machine learning model. So, yeah, I mean, I'm probably, so these are some of the concepts that we saw when analyzing the stroke uh, cohort for uh, both controls and super controls. Uh, this is for a super control. So the, and yeah, and this is for the cases. So I think, I have, so our next step is obviously integrating uh, this with real-time data feed from our vendor, and then having an alert mechanism which which can push notifications to the EHR to the ED physician, or even at least trigger a protocol which then would help the triage nurse triage the patient correctly. Uh, and another thing that we want to mention is, so what we have done is we have also built a solar dashboard of this data that we get after uh, running it through the pipeline. So our solar dashboards, if you are familiar with solar, uh, not only allows you to type and look at uh, and pull up the notes, but you can actually give do facet search and let's say you want to search all nodes which have a certain medication, right, present. You could probably do that much better using the output of CTEX. So the index for it has all that meta information for each document. It has the quiz, it has the polarity, and you can use facet search on a solar dashboard to actually pull up the whole nodes. And this is also something which is operational in our hospital, and this is very useful especially for doing uh, data analysis and data exploration for our for our leadership and for our doctors and clinicians and physicians. So yeah, this is a nice use case of using both Apache CTEX and Apache Solar. Uh, finally, uh, shout out to our leadership team. Uh, so I report, I come under the Steel Institute for Health Innovation which is led by Dr. Karen Murphy. Uh, the, Dr. Dave Vaudry is our Chief Data Informatics Officer. And of course, uh, I report to uh, Casey, who's our AVP. Uh, for the Lung Nodule Project, we had Dr. Patel, who is the Chair for Radiology. Uh, and we actually came up that he was, and him and Dr. Factor, again, who is a pulmonary thoracic surgeon, they were the driving force behind this project. We had a lot of, uh, uh, help from Meg, Meg Horgan. She's a nurse navigator and she actually helped us a lot in validating, coming up with a curated list of concepts, etc., and so forth. Uh, finally, shout out to Satish, who also helped me develop the solar and the elastic search uh, indexes, uh, and Jody and Dhruv uh, for coming up. So, so they are part of the data engineering team, and of course, with that.
the slow correction project, a shout out to Dr. Uh, and this is something which is still in the works. So we are looking to take this uh, probably in production or deployed in the hospital early next year. That's our timeline. We'll see how it goes. So I think I have reached the end of my slide, which is good. I wanted to have a some time left for questions. So let me go back. Thank you. Very much. So we do have a couple of questions waiting. Uh, I can see that you're looking at your chat, so I don't need to read them aloud to you. So does CTEX work only with English? Definitely not, because yesterday I was in a session uh, where they were using Spanish and Catalan. Uh, but yeah, I th and I think uh, they and I think yeah, uh, Sean, if you if you have more details on this, probably you can uh, take this uh, uh, offline. But yeah, the short answer is it it is not only limited to English. So can you talk more about the solar dashboard and indices? Are the QE stored in a field as a basic facet, or is there an ontological aspect to the fields? Yeah. So how we designed? So basically, uh, if you are if you are aware of the solar architecture, you need to create the solar indices, right? So what we do is, as I mentioned, we have an age-based table. We have which has the note ID and the text, and then our solar index has the note ID. And our bunch of queries along with their polarity, history, whatever you want, whatever attributes you want to put in there for each for each uh, query. Uh, at the when somebody types in a search at the lookup, uh, let's say you want to use a loin code for a certain medication and want to pull up pull up all the uh, text or, the, or all the documents which have that loin code. Uh, it actually first searches in the in the solar index. Which has your uh, the mapping with the note ID, and then it goes to the main age based table and fetches it and displays it in the dashboard. I hope that answers the questions. Uh, okay, I, I see a question. Do you use CTEX location of classifier to determine the location of the nodule? Oh, that's a good question. We actually tried using that. So I think somewhere maybe two years ago. Uh, some of them, we saw that some of the modules switched from uh, rule-based to, I think, SVM-based. Some of them were SVM-based. And our internally, when we validated, we saw that the machine learning models were performing lower than the rule-based models. And one of our projects was to kind of retrain our models with our internal data. But we faced a roadblock in terms of getting training data because there is a certain way, if you are aware of how the data should be, and we couldn't find a good training source. So I think, uh, so yes, we tried using the location of, and we actually found, and for not for the lung nodule project, but for a different project, uh, we had to report uh, certain body parts and appendages. We found some code not in the CTEX main branch, but in one of the developer branch, where some of those of was actually implemented. So um, yeah. So I think there is a version somewhere in the uh, one of the dev branches. Uh, I can look in my email and find that uh, I worked on it maybe a year or even more than a year ago, which actually where location of actually works pretty reasonably. So are there any other questions? Uh, yes, so we are using the off-the-shelf sentiment classifier, which comes with uh, uh, CTEX. Uh, we had some, we actually tried out, we had some, we tried to come up with our own negation annotator, and that's where this whole training, uh, the model on our own data set came in. Uh, the negation classifier works pretty well. Uh, that's been my experience so far for JSON. 
but it has sometimes it has trouble sentences and even more than that uh, especially in uh, healthcare and in uh, and if we if we look at the data in healthcare some of the sentences are not grammatically correct so what happens is the parse tree that gets generated is a little bit wacky which throws the negation classifier off so that's what we have seen because especially for ed notes i mean uh, if there's a if there's a transcriber with the ed physician it's okay but if somebody is not if somebody is like uh, typing in dictations many many cases grammar periods are missed which again uh, has an impact on how the parse tree is generated which again throws off uh, all, everything downstream uh, for this one we used the machine learning negation classifier And another thing which I want to mention is, so we run this using Apache Spark. So what, what, so how do we do the lookup? That's that was one of the, our main challenges. So how do how we do our lookup is um, we actually have if I go back here one second this slide okay. So we actually have. Uh, containers we around 200 containers and each one of them loads the whole umls dictionary as a hash map so we so our uh, when we run or set up our, our spark job we actually pass a copy of the ctex mappings and the downside to that is and we tried a bunch of approaches one of the approaches that we tried was whether we could have like uh, SQL light or SQL like database and have the containers connect to it. The problem was if you're running with 100, 200 containers, you have to implement your own uh, demultiplexer to handle all the connections. Otherwise, it's going to saturate your SQL uh, server. So, and also it increases your intra cluster uh, uh, bandwidth requirement, bottle, which is a big bottleneck, especially if you're running uh, on a Hadoop cluster and which actually made our throughput slow. So how we solved it is we actually pass as a zip file the UMLS dictionary. So we have to be very careful on how we choose our concepts. And that's why we have the stage where we curate queries, right? Uh, and then each container have their own copy of the, of the dictionary. So the lookup is very fast, but the trade-off is each container needs at least five gigs of memory to run otherwise it's going to fail let me go back to the chat it looks banana includes strong support for temporal analysis yeah we did not use that off the shelf for banana does that mean your dashboards had both longitudinal and by node views? Uh, so it, it, it definitely had by node views in the sense that uh, you could probably pull up the nodes. Whether we had a longitudinal view of the of the patient, uh, I don't think we did because we did not expose all the node types in our in our dashboard. Uh, so what? I guess, I mean, there are many pitfalls. Uh, I don't know if you're talking about Banana or uh, Apache CTEX. Uh, so recently, actually, we were looking at uh, Elastic uh, because it has similar architecture. But I personally, I think uh, Solar works better for me. And if you ask, and honestly, this is, again, my opinion. People, please feel free to disagree. Uh, I think Kibana, Kibana is a better product than Banana but Solar is a better product than Elastic. Uh, so that's kind of my takeaway from this project. All right, so let me just do a quick scan to see I did not miss any questions.
All right then. Okay, then we have one question. Did you the identify data for your lake project? No, it's all PHI. This is all operational work. Uh, it's all translational work. So this call comes under quality improvement, and that's one of the good things uh, with the team that I work in. I don't have to worry about de-identified data. And I know what you're alluding to. One of the hardest problem right now, especially in NLP, and especially if you are not associated with a healthcare organization, is getting good data. That's, yeah, I see where you're coming from. But luckily now, since uh, I work directly for the health system, uh, I have uh, I have access to all PHI and patient information, which again is required for doing the interventions, like reaching out to them, scheduling them, bringing them back in, and for the stroke project, for triaging them, for and so on and so forth. Will we have access to the recorded sessions? I think so. I think we should. Yes, we are, and actually. We are also interested in uh, I so on, in merging or, or at least putting out there our code that we have developed using Apache Spark because right now the cost to setting up a Spark cluster is next to nothing, especially on the gate chart. So we are looking at probably a publication and then merging it in the CTEX community. Because we modified heavily some of the classes, like the lookup, we modified uh, heavily. We modif had to modify a bunch of uh, the annotator, of course, the, the XML files. So yes, that's something that we're definitely looking into. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Dr. Savova and Sean. Thank you. That was very interesting. And yes, I, I would love to see some of that code and uh, get CTEX running on Spark all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a natural evolution. That's how I think about it. Yeah. I would also be interested uh, if, if we could have a catch up in a year or so after you've got the, uh, the stroke running in the uh, ED. That would be really neat to see how that turns out. Sure. I mean, if you guys are interested, we can uh, take this offline. I think one of our developers who was there a couple of years ago, uh, Brandon, uh, probably knew somebody from your group. Yes, I knew Brandon. Yes. So we can probably, if you want, we can probably uh, catch up online and you know we'd love to uh, kind of see if there are any opportunities and as I said the see the spark code we definitely want to open source or at least put it out there so that other health institutions or even uh, other use cases can use that uh, the dev team that has varied from time to time uh, I when I joined it was just me then we got another FT uh, so it was me and Satish for a long time. Uh, in the last couple of years, we had our team due to around five or six. Uh, some of them were. Uh, right now, again, it's just Satish and me, just because of how the situation is right now. All right, if there are no more questions, I will log off and I'll probably bump into you guys in the next session. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks all, see you in a minute. See ya.